Why hello there you handsome people of the internet, my name is Cinemax and welcome to the second edition of the official Cheshire Studios podcast. Now, as some of you dearies may remember, a whole bunch of youngs ago, me and a couple of my e-buddies from CCS got together and produced a roundtable review of some lousy Mortal Kombat web series that, to tell you the truth, I'm pretty sure most people had already stopped giving a shit about even back then. Even so, due to the irresistible charm of all the hosts and involved and the project's unique visual style, the podcast proved itself to be quite popular and even received praise from some of the harshest critics of the net. And so, since we're all restless men of action who understand the importance of timely content to maintain a stable audience, we had decided to strike while the iron is hot, so to say, and go on a nine-month-long hiatus with only a few feeble sporadic attempts to salvage the project in between. Yeah, we know. Real professional. Do not fret, however, my friends, because luckily for you, we're not the type of people to throw our hands into the air after the first failure and rest on our laurels for the rest of eternity. And in order to prove this to you, we've been officially spent all this time trying to improve every aspect of our show. First, we hired an aspiring young artist who goes by the name of Inverted Mind to draw animated avatars of ourselves to better convey the sheer madness that's happening during our recording sessions. Not really, of course, we're just trying to re- Popspill.com. Next, we altered our podcast format to trim down all the unnecessary drivel and turn our show into a much more pleasant and intelligible experience for you people to enjoy. Eh, not really, of course. We're just trying to rip off the Ricky Gervais show, obviously. And finally, we paid a demented 40-something-year-old hippie 50 bucks to pretend to be a Virginia college student and tell us all sorts of bizarre and wacky stories from his childhood or about his cat who's allegedly secretly an evil genius. Hey! Uh, I mean... Uh... Hey! But enough talk. You all have waited for this episode long enough already, so without further ado, please welcome the official CCS video podcast version 2.0. Like a wild train rolling, so wild and full of steam. Once you get us going, it's like nothing you have seen. With some fire in your belly, you'll move a little faster. And the devil in your eye makes you win a little harder. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cheshire Cat official podcast. I'm Star, and we have with us Laughing Man. Hello. Kenny Farino. Yeah. And the beloved Cinemax. What's up? And today we are elaborating a little bit more on a topic I mentioned slightly in my podcast, Silver Screen Podcast, movie theater experiences. So, a couple questions for everybody here. Up first, um, do you guys have any personal movie theater-related horror stories going on? Of course, everybody does. Okay. Uh, yeah. Laughing Man, you want to go first then? Uh, sure. All right. Am I an expert in theater management? No, but I've been to different types of theaters from small towns to the big Carmike and IMAX theaters in like Seattle. And I won't blame just the theater though, but there's a lot to be desired about the movie going experience, all right? First of all, the cost of food and drinks is absurd. I mean, especially for like a big fucking giant box of Juju Bees. And you get this gigantic fucking box it looks like about the same size as like a small shoe box. And then you open it up when you're inside the theater and the size of the packet of candy is like the size of a fucking condom wrapper. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, and now getting to your seat is another fucking adventure because walking through the rows of seats, you're, you navigate around like sticky puddles of spilled pop from the previous showings. Like you're trying to, to traverse a minefield wearing clown shoes. So you finally manage to keep your shoes clean only to finally sit your ass in a seat and have feel something seeping into your right butt cheek. I mean, it's very, very classy. This has happened to you? You sat on like a wet seat? Yes. Jesus Christ. Now you is it the normal theater, theater or an theater. adult theater? Actually, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. no, dude. It was it was seriously a theater. I think I can't remember the movie. I think it was uh, that one John Cusack movie about uh, the hotel and the multiple oh. personalities. Yeah. Or, yeah. 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 Yeah, that was it. I actually got stuck to the floor. No, I didn't get stuck to the floor, though, but I waited till everyone fucking left that theater before I got out of my seat because I had this big old, like, fucking pop stain all over the side of my ass. No, 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 I did. I got stuck to the floor. Okay, oh, your turn, man. Hell. Go. 
<laughs> no. I haven't had, like, any, you know, big, significant, scary horror stories like uh, Laughing Man has, where he's gotten, like, wet shit on his seats. But I've just had many little irritating things happen to me. Like, yeah, when I was a little kid, I got stuck to the floor because of all the sticky shit that was there. So my parents had to literally, like, pry my shoes off of the ground just to, like, get me anywhere. And then, of course, I took my girlfriend, Heather, to the um, Nightmare on Elm Street movie. And, you know, rated R, like, guts and blood flying everywhere, you know, that kind of thing you'd expect. All of a sudden, though, we hear this young child start to cry, and this, like, very young couple just, like, start, you know, getting all pissed off and angry. So, this young couple takes this little baby kid into a fucking Freddy Krueger movie, and they're just stomping... (laughs) That makes sense. They're just stomping down the aisle, all this kid, like, freaking the hell out. They're pissed off as hell that they won't get to finish seeing the movie. Of course, very dumb on their part. And then, of course, yeah, the candy experience. You know, the Jujubees costing, like, $20. I know, the prices really are ridiculous. They should at least be half of what they are easy. Yeah, so I agree with Laughing Man. You know, it cost me $20 just to get a small popcorn, a drink, and some candy. Like, so what uh, my parents do a lot of the time is they usually go to, like, the store across the street and just buy candy and, like, just sneak it in in their purse. Yeah, or- yeah. Oh, yes, that, that's, family- that's what my the girlfriend smartest always thing do. to do. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what uh, my family would do, too. We'd go to the dollar store, get little dollar bags of candy, put it in my mom's big-ass purse, and... <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, do one up and get, like, Burger King or something. Oh, seriously, I mean, the, the cost of the damn candy is almost enough that the most ma- masculine guy ever would probably, like, bring his own purse full of candy and suffer the ridicule just to save, like, 50 bucks in candy. Yeah. No, no like, the the ridiculous part is that, we all right, um, it was me, my dad, my sister, my brother, and three cousins, so yeah, I think, yeah. like, seven of us who were going to see The Sitter, and instead of going through like the candy line in the store, I mean in the um, in the theater, what we did was go to like the Publix across the street, and like basically we each got like either chips or candy and a drink, and all seven <laughs> of us cost twenty something dollars. All seven of us that would have cost like fifty or sixty dollars candy wise had wow. we been theaters. God damn! All right, it's Max's turn. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sadly, I don't have that much. Uh, horror stories related to the theaters because when it comes to uh, movies, games, books, and pretty much everything else I enjoy, I prefer to do it home, alone, without any distractions. But when I was younger, I used to hit the cinemas quite a lot. And I do remember one particularly bad day when I went to see, what was it? I think it was Harry Potter 5. And, well, it wasn't the only male in the theater, but there was a lot of girls. Teenage girls, like the ones that watch the Twilight movies. Mm-hmm. And it was impossible to watch the movie because every time a main character would appear, it, it was like a rock concert. They just scream. Exactly. And the worst part, I, I, I didn't read the book. And those bitches just kept spoiling the entire movie. It's like a character shows up. Uh, who was it? Uh, that, that guy who's uh, Harry's godfather. What's his name? Chris Black. Yeah, exactly. And like the moment he appeared on screen, one of the girls says like, Oh, do you know he's going to die at the end? Wow. I hate those people. Nice. Yeah. And I'm and I'm going, thanks, bitch. I might as well just go home right now. Wait, did you actually yell that? Please tell me you yelled that. Well, not the bitch part, but it was something <laughs> like, thank you. Thank you. I, I, would, I would throw my like $10 thing of pop at her. <laughs> <laughs> Wham. <laughs> Bitch! I, I don't have anything... It would have been worth the $10. I, 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 just, I just can't picture Cinemax inside a theater in a sea of mentally handicapped jailbait. <laughs> That's like hell. I, I, I definitely feel Laughing Man takes the cake with as far as worst movie experience because I'm kind of more like Kenny and Max. Uh, it's it's just been little moments. The most recent one I can recall, actually, is um, it's a little funny. My... Mom, my brother, and I went to see the Green Lantern movie. And, of course, we got oh, happy because it was thing. like, I liked it. It could have been better, but I liked it. Anyway, it was like empty theater, which was awesome. That's always awesome, having a whole thing to yourself. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, these two shit-ass little, like, 15-year-olds, 14-year-olds came in. And they're just being little fuckers. They're, they're being very loud and distracting and... 
um, I think they threw candy or popcorn or something, and it got to the point my brother was just so fucking annoyed and pissed off that he got up, and my brother's a little intimidating, he's like six foot, he's like two to 250, and he goes over to the kids, <laughs> he goes over to the kids and just hovers over them and goes, stop it! <laughs> oh, Jesus. And the kids were just like, well, facial expressions cannot be recorded on audio, but you get the point. The kids were like, kind of, what the fuck just happened? I'm scared. And my brother just very angrily walked back to the seats, and we watched the movie. But the kids were quiet the rest of the time. <laughs> By the way, Moving on. Oh. No, I had a question. Okay. okay, go ahead. Have you guys ever tried midnight screenings? No. No? I don't want to bother uh, with really. I like the crowd. I don't want to wait in line. I don't have to be at a film for its opening day. I don't mind giving it a couple of days or a weeks for the crowd to die down so I can enjoy a nice, quieter, uncramped theater. No, no. You see, the thing is, it's a, it's a pity we don't have Will be masked with us because I believe he mentioned how he went to see uh, those, you know, good old Disney films at midnight screenings, and the, the audience was respectable. They laughed when it was appropriate. They cheered up when it was appropriate, but but at other times when it was like a dramatic moment in Milan or something, they stayed quiet, just like oh, the yeah. audience should. So yeah, I was wondering whether it was he he was just lucky or if it's like a common experience at midnight screenings. Yeah, Maybe I've, British I've, people are just more polite than American audiences. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah. They're all sirs, <laughs> sitting there with tea and monocles. Yeah. <laughs> I say, George, this is a very like, cheerio, <laughs> excellent movie. Be quiet. <laughs> I say, I'm very cross with you right now. I say, Betty, won't you give me a blowjob during the movie? <laughs> I say! Uh -huh. we're, no, we're, we're, we're going way off topic here. Let's, let's get back on. Go, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, next question then. What do you guys think of the quote unquote bullshit gimmicks that are coming to theaters? You know, of course, there's the 3D. I mentioned in my podcast the D box experience where the chairs moving around. Um, I'm trying to think what else they've done in the past. But overall, what, what do you guys feel about that? And is it enhancing film? Is it dehancing film? <laughs> I think Laughing Man's Laugh like pretty much said everything that needed to be said about it. As we tried to say in like the 3D podcast, before that just sort of fell into oblivion. 3D, you know, used to be something neat because it would just help, you know, it just gave the movie a different feel. level of... Yeah, it just gave it a different feel, different level of experience. And if done right, 3D could be really neat. But everything is just turning into gimmick, you know, gimmicksville these days. So it's just why bother seeing fucking Beauty and the Beast in 3D? Like, Heather and I tried to see Beauty and the Beast recently because it was re-released. And, like, we tried to find movie theaters that weren't playing in it playing it in 3D. None of them were. It was just all in 3D. Otherwise, you go out and buy the fucking DVD. Yeah, I think that's, like, the better alternative. So when, like, I think it's The Little Mermaid that's coming out next. I think okay. that'll just be a DVD buy. Max, uh. what's your opinion? <laughs> <laughs> all right, right. I believe the title says it all. They're they're just bullshit and they're gimmicks. And um, if, like Kenny said, 3D when done right can actually, well, it, I guess it could enhance the experience because people saying like that film uh, Hugo by Martin Scorsese that the 3D is done right. It doesn't get in the way of the experience. But when 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 you've got shit like the the D box or as I call it the dumbass experience or the D bag. Uh, yeah, or even that, you know, that movie Spy Kids 4 that came out like an, <laughs> uh, like a decade after the last Spy Kids movie. Yeah, and the main gimmick was the whole uh, 4D, which turned out to be smell -o vision Seriously? Uh, yeah, but I do remember reading somewhere that one of the gimmicks that the uh, director, Robert Rodriguez, wanted to install is in some certain theaters, you could actually smell what was going on in the film. So if, if, if you're watching Austin Powers and Fat Bastard comes on the screen. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Please no. Please no. I'm, I'm ready to smell stale KFC and Doritos. I'm out. Uh. No, like, it's... So I guess, like... I mean, we sort of prattled on about 3D enough, but what about other... What about other, like, you know, quote-unquote innovative movie experiences, like the D-Box, or just things that they could, like, absurdly start making in the next couple of years, like interactive well, we, we were, cutscene movies. We were talking about like the choose your own adventure type thing, right? Anybody want to start in on that? 
Well, like I said in my show, I, I did experience that. I mean, it was years ago and the memory is vague, but I mean, at the time, I think I thought this was kind of fun and different. You know, you kind of feel like you're in control of the film, which was a little fun, because how many times do you watch a movie and you're like, no, no. Yeah, but the thing is, like me and Oaf and Men discussed in the forums of Cheshire Studios, which you have, you know, must uh, visit right now. Which they are to watch this. Yeah. This kind of stuff, the choose your own adventure, could become pretty problematic because, first of all, in order for this, for such a system to be successful, you got to start making films based around the whole gimmick because otherwise you're going to have, like I mentioned, you know, you're watching Inception and there's like only one right option throughout the entire film. And that's just bullshit. And second, I'm not sure whether movies really need a system like this because I say leave the interactivity part to video games and stuff, stuff like that, because I don't know, I, I, you know, when I watch a movie, I want to enjoy someone else's story, you know, but if if I want to make my own story, I'll just go and play a video game. And yeah. That's my take. Right. So I, it, it, would, it would work by like, you know. Uh, the audience, it'd be like a popular vote with the audience, right? There'd be like a little I, keypad or something. I you press a blue button for option works. one, red button for option two, yeah. and yeah, the popular like vote continues the story. Honestly, I think the <laughs> average movie-going audiences are way too dumb for like yes. implementing anything like that. They well, just it's, go, it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> here's the blue button. The biggest pain in the ass for any normal moviegoer, intelligent or not. Should I just quote this entire thing I wrote? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, it's fine. Alright, so... So 15 minutes into Inception, you get a game over screen thanks to the audience voting for the wrong option. You blame everyone for hitting the red button even though you hit it yourself. You leave the theater and go back in, spend another ten dollars on a ticket and nine dollars on a small Coca-Cola and give it another go. You hit the blue button this time, but now there's a new audience who outvotes you with the red button and you die once again at the 15 minute mark. You leave the theater, spend another ten dollars on a ticket, and because your nine dollar Coca-Cola was mostly water, you're forced to pay two dollars and quarters to unlock the theater's new pay urinal, the next logical place for theaters to screw you over and make the movie going experience even more unbearable. After hunting for eight quarters by checking pay phones, begging from strangers, and picking spare change off the bathroom floor, all while dancing around like a Special Olympics floor routine gymnast, you finally find relief. The next man who enters the restroom pisses in the trash bin while you're trying to find another spare quarter to use the theater's new coin-operated sink. You return to the lobby and pay another ten dollars for stale popcorn that tastes like it's marinated in the same yellow substance you found some of the bathroom floor quarters in, and return once again to play your video game movie, swearing to God that if any assholes hit the red button ever again, you're gonna go on a homicidal rampage with a weed whacker wearing nothing but white gloves and a tinfoil hat. At the 15 minute mark, you stand up in your chair and threaten to disembowel anybody who even dares to think of the red button. The audience doesn't take you seriously, so you curb stomp a 16 year old cocksucker who's been talking on the smartphone the entire time, and the audience quickly presses the blue button. At the 30 minute mark, you're supposed to hit the red button this time instead of blue, so game over. You go across the street to the Home Depot and purchase Reynolds Wrap and a still weed eater. Yeah, fucking idea. <laughs> You're a maniac. Ladies and gentlemen, applause. Oh yeah, damn right. Woo! The worst thing is to actually talk like this. <laughs> this, yeah. this is me when I am pissed. Wow. This is laughing, man, in real life, ladies. This, 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 Line this on is up. This is a one-time occurrence. If you know me, I do this daily. <laughs> Curb stump teenagers. Damn. Come on, ladies. Are you single? You know you want. <laughs> Never you know you want laughing man. Laughing man. <laughs> oh god, that 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 was priceless. I recently tried the deep the d bag chair. You know. Oh, you did. Uh, yeah, I, re I recently tried the d bag chair. Wasted, I think, like fifteen dollars on a ticket. I'm not sure. Wait, you actually watched a whole movie doing that? Huh. I think I think so. I was just sort of curious. Plus, I knew this podcast was coming up, so I went on. So when I got in there, you know, I first noticed the chair. The chair. All right, the chair was there. I was like, fine, okay. So I sat down, and when the movie started up. It felt like the chair was starting to take off like a space shuttle. I was like, oh, <laughs> dear. Oh, no. Here did, we go. Did, did you tense <laughs> up and, and keep yourself level, or did you just kind of go ragdoll and just <laughs> chair? Honestly, I go ragdoll all the time anyway. So, no, so you the, felt like I mean, a bobblehead then, right? Because that's how no. you said it felt like. 
No, I wish there was a seatbelt on it, at least, because, like, the entire time it felt like I was at a rave. You know, I was just flailing around going, oops, 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 while the chair was just doing its thing. It felt like I was being barraged from all sides by kids who were bored and just felt like kicking the fucking chair. Thank you. So, no, so eventually what happened, I think it was, like, the 15 or 20 minute mark of the movie, you know, eventually I couldn't take it anymore, you know. I had the... Me- what? No, I had the very, I had the very bad decision of also like buying a small popcorn and a drink. But and that aside, all the chairs vibrating and erupted like a freaking Mentos and Diet Coke experiment. No, one of them, one of them, what ended up happening was my. Kenny son. walks out. Kenny walks out with wet pants and like, holy crap, it must have been really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, kind, what kind of movie did you watch? Uh, Stripperella. No, Debbie takes Dallas, but. Like, my Ew. stomach actually started to erupt, like, a fucking Coke and Mentos thing. So, I got, a, like, I lurched up from the chair, and I started running down the aisle. I did not give a shit who was in my way. People's drinks started flying everywhere. So, yes, I did actually come out of the theater wet, but for the different reason. And so, I just dashed in the bathroom, and that was my D-chair experience. So, never it again. literally nauseous. Yes, never again. Wow. You know what would be really funny is to take a beer, like a can of beer, and just stick it inside the the D-Box thing, and, you know, it'll, it'll <laughs> shake it up all nice. You don't open it, though. You leave it for the next person to come in. They're like, oh, look, I don't open beer. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> oh, laughing man, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I was going to... Ma- Let Max Go talk. Ahead, Max. Go ahead, Max. Yeah, I was going to mention, you remember that old THX intro, the one with the sound oh, vibration? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, Imagine, like, with the D-Box experience, it, the intro is, like, 20 seconds long, and in those 20 seconds, the audience gets, you know, <laughs> thrown in their chairs, like, breaking yeah, there's bones, a pre- there's, a, there's a pregnant woman in the audience all of a sudden hears, <laughs> <laughs> And it feels like a 10-point earthquake. God damn it. You know what? I, I was, I was going to mention this earlier, though. Um, You know how, like, I think it was uh, the old Vincent Price movie, uh, The House on Haunted Hill? How they used to have like that skeleton fly ah! through the theater. Oh yeah. They used, have, like, they used to have like people like stalk in the theater and they'd like, you know, scare people. I remember Kenny told me that uh when the new Nightmare on Elm Street came out, he dressed up like Freddy Krueger, he had the claw. And go ahead and t- go ahead and tell a story Kenny, oh. Just oh yeah, yeah. This was like in the same showing where like there was the crying baby and the angry couple, but what I did, I dressed up as Freddy Krueger, right? So I brought like shitty foam hat and the striped sweater and the claw. It was a plastic claw, mind you. But during, like, the scary parts of the movie, there was this person who was actually falling asleep right in front of me. And so <laughs> what I ended up doing was... People laugh. Yeah, I just started, like, creeping my claw up, like, through the back of her <laughs> ever so slowly, bringing it over the edge. And I rested the claw on her shoulder and started, like tapping my fingers on it. Oh my god. And she just sort of start like she just sort of started away going, oh, you know. Nice. Welcome to my nightmare, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if only I said that. But she probably thought it was part of the movie though. <laughs> yeah, but see, so, so, something like that would be kind of fun, you know, like uh if you're watching like Friday the Thirteenth or something else, and this guy dressed up, a, a convincing guy dressed up as Fred Jason or something, walks down the like the the aisle and kind of stops and kind of creeps behind somebody and like raises up the machetes and everyone else behind him is all laughing and stuff, and the person finally turns around and they see this freaking hockey mask and machete. I, I always thought that was fun. I remember when uh, I think it was X Men Two came out. It was it was way after the fact. But oh God, don't, don't tell me someone dressed up like Wolverine and started no, no, like no, 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 plastic no, no. clawing people. No, 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 no. That's not the idea I wanted to do. Again. I thought about this way after the fact. I, Maybe it was, was like X Men Three, and someone dressed up as Juggernaut. It's like I'm the Juggernaut, it's bitch. Nobody dressing up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> what? Fuck. Let the woman tell her story. Thank you. So <laughs> the idea I wish I could have thought of when the movie was still in theaters is take like 12, 15 of my friends and me. We go see the film. We all scatter throughout the theater. And then at the end part, when Xavier is looking for the mutants, and in the movie all the mutants are grabbing their heads in ultimate pain, I thought it'd be hysterical if me and my friends would start doing that, and we keep doing it until he starts looking for the humans in the movie. <laughs> oh, dear God. And, if only and, there was... And, and, and when Storm is, like, electrocuting people, you get to sit behind someone with a laser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, go I... jail, you go to jail, though, but it'd be so fucking priceless. The, the next question was, uh, how do you fix cinemas? Which well, for one, ban children. Ban mm. all children. That's not yeah, that's good. That's going to be good for a Disney movie. 
Uh, at least babies. At least the ones who, like, cry and freak the fuck out. The ones even who can't though... fucking even understand the movie shouldn't be going to the movie. Well, my mom, because I used to ask my mom, what would you do when I'd start crying? Because, you know, you're one, two, you take the kid to the film. My mom said if I wasn't able to shut up, they'd get up and leave. <laughs> they, they, they take Star in the cradle, they open the back door to the theater, drop her off in the alley and watch the movie. <laughs> just let Johnny the Hobo take care of her for 40 minutes. And then I just, just see a little baby Star turning and looking at the hobo. He's like, oh, I cut off. <laughs> All right, Max, you got any ideas? Yeah, uh, actually, I think the idea that Kenny proposed, uh, you know, if it's a horror movie and, you know, have, like, someone dressed up like Freddy Krueger or Jason, and at, at a certain point in the movie, like, the scariest part of the movie, like, he shows up out of nowhere, it, it could backfire since it's going to be <laughs> distracting, but that could actually work. I mean, as long as it's not obnoxious. I mean, like, 12 people scattering throughout the audience and screaming or something like that. Yeah, I mean, just do it like William Castle did. What director William Castle used to do during the 50s or 60s was in his movies, like House on Haunted Hill or The Tingler, um, he would always have these like fun and fantastical gimmicks that would go on uh, during the time. Like in House on Haunted <laughs> Hill, as uh, one of you brought up earlier, like the skeleton like flying through the audience. And in the movie The Tingler, uh, there was actually this one part where the screen was just completely black. You know, they just had like the character saying, Stop! Everyone in this movie theater, the tingler is loose. Watch <laughs> out! And then they'd have this like little tingler creature come out from like the seats for some people or everyone, and like have this <laughs> have this set person like run the fuck away screaming. <laughs> nice. You know? So William Castle had the right idea. Make like the theater into a sort of like a amusement park or what have you. I mean, hey, why not? Yeah. Yeah, but you know what has to change first and foremost? What's that? The audience. Yes. Yeah, good good luck with that one. <laughs> you, you know what I want to see? I want to see ushers again. Ushers. I want to see these big, tall, bouncing-looking motherfuckers <laughs> big red, red big red jackets and those little round monkey hats. And I want oh, to stand yes. in the back of the theater with a 12-inch steel shaft and make them flashlight who will pounce like a jungle cat on the minute he hears a ringtone or he sees the pale light of a smartphone. And he'll grab the motherfucker by the scruff of his neck and throw his ass out the parking lot. <laughs> yeah! I, 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 I will pay to see that before paying to see the actual movie itself. Wow. I, I will pay $10 to see that. <laughs> and you know you know what? I, I, read, I don't want like a police state in the theater or anything, but I'd rather just get rid of these assholes who ruin the movie experience because they think they need to tweet. Yeah, or the people who or, think they're so funny or, and like do Mystery Science Theater 3000 yes, type. Yeah. Of people who that guy with like glasses that. the entire fucking movie the entire time. I mean, I, I was watching the Silent Hill movie, which I do like, but especially yeah. the first half. And yeah, all I fucking funny. heard was, oh, that's stupid, oh, oh, that's fake, oh, oh. and I'm like, shut the fuck up, that's Pyramid Head, don't go dissing my fucking Pyramid Head. <laughs> yeah, it's just have Laughing Man Sushers come in and beat the shit out of him with their giant flashlights. Hey, there you go, there you go. I, 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 will, be, I will be in the balcony with a laser pointer. Laughing Man, business opportunity for you, man. You know, I, yeah. I, 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 would, I would do it, it would be so fucking fun. Just the minute you hear it, go over and just beat the shit out of the guy, throw him out in the parking lot, and be like, anybody else? Yeah, but anyway, we've talked about everything that we needed to really, you know, talk about. So let's wrap this shit up. Yep. So uh, for me, get get the get the prices of everything down and be re you know reasonable. I don't want to spend twenty dollars for a fucking tub of popcorn, especially especially when the popcorn is fucking stale and it tastes like goddamn olive oil. So, you know, uh, get, get the prices down, have some type of, like, enforcement over the cell phone policy. And kick small children in the face when they start crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I say hire the bouncers that you mentioned because you, 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 you hire those guys, you've got all the problems away. You've got Yes, people, I agree. The people will stop talking, they'll stop using their cell phones. Because otherwise, just imagine, like, you know, the kind of muscle you'd see in Indiana Jones, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh god, like the giant Nazi in Raiders of the Lost Ark. I'm, I'm a basically a lot of you. I think prices should come down. I do think every theater should have stadium seating. I think that's a brilliant idea. All the armrests should be able to come up. And uh, I just thought of something, though. The only way to probably fully enjoy the film while still going out, maybe, slightly, drive-in theater. Fuck yes. I mean, there are plenty of those around the Richmond, Virginia area. Like, lots and lots of drive-in theaters. And... You know, those are a good time. You know, you can chill out in your car, chill out with some friends. Yeah. Like, and if you have, like, if you're not in a convertible, 
then you can be as loud as you want because no one will hear you and you can still hear the movie. Yeah, the only complaint I had about that, because I've only done the experience one time, was the film quality wasn't that good at my experience. I'm not sure if it's like that everywhere, but um, I still enjoyed it. You know, I really think there should be more of them. In fact, back in New York, there was only one drive-in theater near where I lived. And I shit you not, they tore it down just to build a regular theater. That fucking mm. blows. Yes, I, I was really pissed. Oh, and I'm just you know, like... You know what would be really cool? Is like, if you're making out in the back seat and you look in the back of the rearview mirror, there's people wearing like 3D glasses and eating popcorn and it looks like they're watching you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, Yeah! when we swing on your brother.